Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this part two of um, getting to know NRS, the Let's Talk Runaway Prevention Curriculum, recent updates and a new look. I am Shanae Wings, the Director of Training and Quality Assurance here at NRS, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I do want to acknowledge those from NRS, um, from the National Runaway Safe Line that are on with us today, uh, starting with Susan Frankel. Just do a quick wave um, for those to see. Um, Samantha Gillis, Jeff, Christopher, and Natalie. I also want to thank Fizby and Anna Cody for um, supporting us and um, be, being a part of this presentation on today. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. National Runaway Safe Line is the federally supported national communication system. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we get started, um, how many of you guys are gonna just take a quick poll um, how many of your, you or your organization have facilitated the Let's Talk Runaway Prevention Curriculum? Just so we can know who's in the room and who's participated today. So give you guys a few seconds to go ahead and um, answer the poll that you see on the screen. Give it a few more seconds. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's quite a few of you that are new to um, the Let's Talk curriculum. We have about 74% that um, this curriculum will be new and you'll be learning more. And then we have about 26% that have utilized this curriculum before. So for those that have utilized this curriculum before, we're excited to present to you the updates um, and the look of it and um, added information that um, has taken place with the curriculum. A few things, a few housekeeping, as you guys are already in the chat, introduce yourself we continue um, we encourage you to continue utilize the chat and um, participate in the chat if you have questions comments or thoughts please share them in the chat throughout the presentation I'll um, stop or have someone to assist in um, addressing any uh, questions that need to be addressed at the time so um, with that being said we'll go ahead and get right into it um, also uh, for those of you that have participated in the first part of the presentation last week the beginning stages is a recap of um, who NRS is and what we do. So some of this information may sound familiar, um, but we promise we'll get right into the Let's Talk curriculum um, for those that were on the presentation last week. Thank you guys again for joining and participating. For those of you who are not familiar with the National Runaway Safe Line, we are the federally supported national communication system for youth in crisis, runaway youth, and homeless youth. Our mission is to keep America's runaway, homeless, and at-risk youth safe and off the streets. NRS has been around for 50 years. We're actually celebrating our 50th year anniversary this year. Um, we are headquartered here in Chicago. Each year, NRS makes over 125,000 connections to offer help through our hotline, our online services, and offline resources to youth, families, and service providers nationwide. <clears throat> NRS services can be um, accessed in two ways. We have our um, 1 800 runaway hotline where you can access our services, and then we have our digital services that can be accessed through our 1 800 runaway.org website. All of our services are trauma informed, solution focused, crisis, um, and we provide crisis intervention with our services. Um, there are five steps that we train our uh, staff and volunteers in our crisis intervention model to be able to provide these services, whether they're through the hotline or through our, um, or they're accessing us digitally. On our hotline, um, young people or families can reach out to us to get information and refer referrals. They'll um, uh, 
we have a database of approximately 600, uh, 6,500 um, agencies and, and other organizations that we can provide general information to and referrals to young people. Um, we have our message service, which is um, an opportunity for youth and parent, parents and guardians to um, leave messages for one another to kind of uh, indirectly initiate means of communication for young people that are experiencing uh, difficulties or um, experiencing crisis or not quite ready to um, communicate with their, their, their parents just yet. So we have messaging services um, that are available for young people and their parent or guardians. Um, again, it's an indirect um, way to open the lines of communication, which will hopefully lead to our next form of services, which is conference calling. Through our conference calling service, it's kind of the next step for opening the lines of communication with the, um, the helping young people to be able to um, advocate for themselves. We serve as a mediator between um, young people and their parent and guardians in the communicating process. Um, and also as an advocate and mediator when um, accessing services for young people. And then one of our other, um, lastly but not least, one of our other um, hotline services is our uh, program, the Home Free Program, which is the Home Free Family Reunification and Transportation Program um, in partnership with Greyhound. This program reunites youth with their family and legal guardians or help them to get um, to an alternative living arrangement um, by providing a free bus ticket. This bus ticket can help them uh, travel in state, travel um, across the state or you know, nationally. And we also can provide guardian tickets um, as needed for um, re the un reunification process. There are age specific parameters um, with this program to just ensure that there's safety when traveling and things of that nature. Then we have our digital services. These services, again, can be accessed through our 1-800-runaway.org website, where there's interactive live chats, um, where they're able to speak to our crisis service team, a member of our crisis service team or volunteers to help walk them through um, whatever situation that they're experiencing to provide them with the resources, referrals, and um, crisis intervention that is needed. Then we have our crisis form and email where we um, can monitor and answer questions, general questions and provide general information for young people that need those services. We have our text line where they can, um, young people can text help to 66008 and we'll be able to access our services along with our free educational and promotional materials, which we'll talk more about throughout this presentation. So why is this work important? It's important for a plethora of reasons. Um, the statistics show that one in 30 adolescent minors, that's ages 13 and 17, endure some form of homelessness within a year. Now, when we think of homelessness, generally, you know, you think of being out on the streets, not having a place to, to live, but homelessness can also include when young people run away, um, being kicked out of their home, um, couch surfing, so going from home to home, whether it's with relatives, friends, or sleeping on, um, you know, someone else's couch, it's instability. Um, so you have one in 30 adolescents ages 13 to 17 that can experience that level of instability. Then you have one in 10 young adults ages 18 to 25 that um, may endure some form of homelessness in their lifetime. There are also special um, populations that are more at risk for experiencing homelessness, such as the LGBTQ youth population. Um, they experience homelessness at a, a, a rate more than twice their peers. Young people who identify as African-American or Black make up 20, 23% of youth homeless population while representing only 14% of the general population. So that is another group that um, is at risk or experience higher rates of homelessness. And then you have as many as 1.1 million children um, that have young parents who experience homelessness during the, during the year. So that just means that um, 
teen parenting are at a higher risk of experiencing homelessness as well. So when you have youth that are out on the street, ultimately they are at risk for experiencing more trauma, um, risky behaviors, risky sexual behaviors, or um, at a higher risk of experiencing human trafficking. So this is why our work is important. So that the statistics that we just went through were national statistics. NRS all, um, does our own research and um, you know, we have our own data. And in 2021, our data showed that 68% of youth who connected, contacted with NRS were still at home when they reached out to us. You had 12% of youth who connected with NRS while they were at a friend's house. So while our crisis intervention work is important, when young people reach out to us, our prevention work is just, just as important. You have a large number of young people that are reaching out to us and um, contacting us for our services before leaving the home. There are 8% of youth who contacted us after they were um, they left the home, they were out on the streets. And then 5% of the youth who connected with NRS were at, at a relative's house. Ultimately, they, young people are contacting us from home because of the prevention work and the um, knowledge about our services ahead of time. And we're able to intervene and help them to, you know, during their crisis and things of that nature. So, Accessing our services, when you, when, you, when you log on to the 1-800-RUNAWAY.org website, you'll see all of our available services. Here we have highlighted our prevention and education services, which we're going to talk more about. And then the services that I mentioned for our digital, you see the boxes are highlighted down below, our call, chat, email, form, and text services. So they're easily recognizable for um, whether digitally or through our, um, through our hotline. But we're gonna talk more about our prevention services. Our prevention services <clears throat> or our runaway prevention efforts includes educational blogs that highlight runaway and homeless youth issues and resources, providing that, that youth and um, lived experience voice. Um, we offer educational and outreach materials such as brochures, street outreach cards, um, bookmarks, et cetera, that you're able to download um, from our website to use within your organizations um, and, and or um, distribute digitally. So you can download them, you can print them um, and have access to those educational materials. Then we also have the National Runaway Prevention Month Awareness Campaign that happens every November where we shine the light on youth homeless um, issues throughout the, the nation. We get other organizations um, nationwide to uh, get involved with the campaign, um, shining the light and highlighting those um, youth homelessness issues. And then we have our very active youth advisory board and youth ambassadors. Again, providing the voice of um, young people in their lived experience, um, being able to provide that insight and guidance in helping us when it comes to program developing materials and our programs that helps with prevention um, and sharing their um, their lived experience and then lastly we have our less talk runaway prevention curriculum which we're going to get more into and to learn about today so the less talk runaway prevention curriculum <clears throat> This is a 14 module life skills curriculum available to download on our website. There are four main goals, which is to build life skills, educate young people about alternatives to running away, um, encourage young people to seek help from trusted adults, and increase knowledge about runaway resources and prevention. Um, this curriculum is um, geared to um, work with young people between the ages of 12 to 20. Now, we do recognize that that is a large um, age group, right? Ages 12 to 20, that's a, a, a large spectrum. 
Um, however, our curriculum is very flexible um, and adaptable in how you present it um, so that it can adapt to any um, young person within those the age range of 12 to 20. The curriculum is available in English and in Spanish, and it can be used in schools, it can be used in after school programs, in other runaway and homeless youth programs, um, youth groups, et cetera. Um, again, it's a very flexible and adaptable curriculum. So there are many benefits to the less talk curriculum. Um, one, again, being able to have that adaptability and flexibility of pick and choose which um, activity you'll use. So it can be implemented by activity. It can be implemented by the, the module, um, or you can implement it in, in its entirety. Um, the point is you don't have to, you know, start at module one and end at module 14. You can say, you know what, um, it's very important that we're talking about um, um, uh, safety and you can select a module that fits with safety. Okay, it's very user friendly and adaptable. It includes additional resources, worksheets and handouts that's all provided there for you. Um, there's support um, opportunity for peer leading um, and learning. So young people can help educate one another. Um, if you, you, again, curriculum is written for age groups 12 to 20. If you have a group where there um, are many that fit within that age range, they can work together in um, implementing the curriculum and learn from one another. It supports life skill um, acquisition and prevention efforts. Um, it can be included in service learning opportunities for young people. It can supplement other life skills curriculum, along with in, um, there's technical assistance and, and support from NRS. So as you are um, utilizing and implementing the um, curriculum, if you run into any type of technical difficulties or issues, you can reach out to someone from um, NRS specifically, um, Jeff from um, Jeff Stern from NRS to be able to get you in, in connection with the right person to assist you with those technical um, issues. So you have technical support as well. <clears throat> One of the things that I mentioned earlier is that there were updates to the uh, curriculum. So for the, those of you that have utilized the Let's Talk um, curriculum beforehand, you'll see that the, the image on the left looks very familiar. However, the image on the right with the Let's Talk more brighter colors added in some, um, some more coloring, it's a more updated look. This, there is a, um, overhaul, um, a larger overhaul in the updates. And this update is taking place in, um, in several um, stages. So right now, the first stage we want to introduce you all to is just the update in, in the look of things, um, adding more um, icons, more updated icons and things of that nature. And then the next stage, we move into updating the actual um, context of um, information, adding in some more activities or modules within, um, or activities within those modules or adding in new modules as well. That's later on, but right now we wanna introduce you all to the new look and feel of the actual curriculum. Um, one thing to note that the curriculum is in English and Spanish as stated before, the Spanish version is still um, in the original, um, the original format, which is the image on your, your left. The Spanish version will be updated once we com complete the full update. That means the content um, added in, modules, activities, all of that. Then we will um, go back and update the Spanish version. So you can still access the Spanish version um, as needed. Um, it's all, you know still translated, the information is still relevant. Um, it's just the look will be the same as the other one. That will be the final stage of our update when we update the Spanish curriculum. So what to expect with the updates? Again, a more modernized look and feel throughout. There's consistent organization and layout across modules. 
Um, there's updated language and terminology. Um, for example, LGBTQ is now LGBTQIA+. Um, you have internet terms and um, sources which um, have been added into the curriculum. There are clearer icons. It's um, easier to read with the fonts and colors, and then um, updated worksheets with new, more user-friendly graphics. So these are just a few of the changes. <clears throat> and again, you'll see these things and examples of the icons and things of that nature all throughout um, the curriculum and throughout this presentation. So one of the things when we talk about consistent um, in uh, the organization and layout, you have the Let's Talk module layout. Each module will have this setting. You have the learning goals. You'll see the defined, um, define the issue. You'll see the specific icons um, that relates to that particular curriculum. Then it goes into the module activity. So one module may have two activities. Another module may have three activities. So then it moves right into the activities. It lists the time requirements. It tells you the materials that will be needed for this particular activity, um, the module activity content, um, meaning, you know, um, your instruction as the facilitator and how to um, present the, the activities. You have your handouts and worksheets that are uh, coincide with the activity that's right there with, with the activity. That's something that's very different um, in the old curriculum. For those of you who are familiar with the Let's Talk curriculum, the handouts and worksheets would, were at the back end um, of the curriculum, whereas this time the activities, um, handouts and worksheets are right there with the module in, in that particular activity setting. So you don't have to go search for them or go back and forth. And then you have your references and resources. <clears throat> Making sure I cover that. So just as I just mentioned about the module layout, this is a sample here for you to see. So we have module one here that's clearly stated. Then you have um, the actual title of that module in highlighted in blue. Again, that's going to be consistent throughout all modules. Um, so this is module one, communication and listening. Then you have the learning goals of that particular module. And then um, going into defining the issue as stated. Then you see um, specific icons for this particular module. So you have here the check, which um, stands for a must do um, in this particular activity. And then we move into the next part of the module layout. Next slide. Where you see the actual activities and um, for this particular module. So you see here the green icon check that's saying that all, what's it, four activities must um, happen in order to complete this module. And then it tells you the time frame where this module is 45 minutes. It should take about 45 minutes to complete the full module, the list of materials that's needed. Um, and then you see another icon here highlighting a helpful hint. And then you go into the actual activity. So when you see here on the right side under activity A, where it breaks it down, some activities, it, it will be a description of what can be done or how to implement the um, activity. Or then there'll be some where you see on this one where it's more scripted, where it'll tell you to state X, Y, and Z, um, uh, you know, provide A, B, and C, then, then do this. So it gives you a more scripted instruction on how to implement the module. So this is here, um, the example of what the module layout for each module looks like in the updates to um, that layout. Oh, I'm sorry, lastly, you have your handouts and worksheets as we stated are grouped with the actual activity versus being in the back as it was before. Um, and then you go into your references and resources. Again, added information in order to help you prepare as a facilitator. Um, you know, it may be some reading and maybe other videos or things of that nature that can assist in the facilitation and execution of the activities within this module. 
As stated before, um, on the right-hand side, you'll see the icons. These are the various different icons that will be throughout each activity. Some icons may only be in that one particular um, module or activity. Some icons may be throughout, but you get to see what they are and what they mean. So again, you, we saw the green check mark. If you look all the way down at the bottom, it's a must do. And that lets you know that this must take place in this particular activity. Then we also saw the light bulb um, icon in the example, which is a helpful hint. Um, it provides facilitation uh, suggestions or supplemental instruction to consider when um, implementing the activity for that particular module. So it's good to pay attention to these icons and familiarize yourself with the icons and the meanings of the icons. So um, as a facilitator, you'll be able to um, um, be better prepared in your presentation. <clears throat> so we stated earlier that there are 14 modules. Um, our module topics for um, the Let's Talk curriculum, you have um, starting with communication and listening, which we got a peek at um, in the module layout when we saw the first module one. Then we move into module two, which is adolescent development. Um, module three, personal influences. Then we move all the way through to um, topics such as national uh, safe connections, um, anger management, um, stress reduction, sexuality and sexual orientation, and then future life planning. These are the current modules, um, but again, we are moving into the second stage of our updates where there may be added modules and added activities within these current modules. <clears throat> so now we're going to take some time to just kind of really dig into and, uh, and, and do a few activities uh, from some of the modules, just so that you guys can experience it, the Let's Talk curriculum um, for yourselves. But before I do that, I want to take a pause here to just see, were there any questions or anything that we needed to stop and address, Jeff? No questions? Okay. So um, <clears throat> let's look at uh, module three. Module three is a lesson on personal influences. We're actually going to go through as a group and complete one of the activities here. So you see that the learning goals for this particular um, module, we have three. We want to identify how personal values, um, principles, and beliefs affect our decision making. We want to identify influence, the influential um, others, both positive and negative, and discuss why these people are influential to us. We want to reflect on the role of influences uh, of influential others in the decision-making process. So those are the three learning goals. There are two activities, but again, we're only going to do one. So the first activity is the personal shield. And then you have the second activity, which is who's on your bus. That's the activity that we, as a group, are going to go through together. So we're going to get active in the chat here. So on who's on your bus. And again, this is what you'll see as a facilitator in this um, particular module. You have the directions here, where it lets you know exactly what it is that we're going to instruct um, the participants to do. You see um, the actual activity sheet that you would have where it has the, the um, Greyhound bus, which is um, kind of a um, paying homage to our home free program and partnership with Greyhound. We have the bus here um, in the middle and it's who's on our bus, who's going to provide the supports the, the, that we need. So the instructions, and I want you guys to utilize again, the chat and um, we're gonna, uh, Participate, um, complete this activity. So we want to fill out the bus seats on our bus. Who provides us with the necessary um, support of our health as individuals? Who influences us and um, provides that support? So um, with each group that you see here um, listed, you want to identify who's the most important person in your life, such as your family, friends, teachers, or significant others. Um, you want to include only people, no pets, no inanimate objects, your cell phone or laptop or anything like that. 
Um, and you can create as many bus seats as needed within that section. So where it says physical, that is um, who provides physical, um, who supports your physical health. What individual person in your life supports your physical health? So I'm gonna give you guys a few moments in the chat to go ahead and, um, and state that you, don't, you can be real person or names, right? So we have, um, and then you have, who supports your emotional health? Who would you list on your bus that supports your spiritual health? And who supports your social health? So if I was to be filling this out, the person that supports my physical health health would be one of my best friends. She's actually a physical trainer. She, you know, somebody that I've been working with um, in the past, right? Then my emotional health would be that same best friend. Um, she's the one that I go to to kind of talk through all of my problems. Um, my spiritual health, the person that supports my spiritual health would be my mother, right? Um, for myself, that's who I would list on the bus. Um, and then uh, my social health, I would probably list all of my friends, uh, childhood friends, sorority sisters, and all of us. That would be a very long list of individuals. So we have a couple of participants in the chat. We have emotional health, um, family, friends, physical health, their parents, um, spiritual health, their pastor, um, social health, their coworkers and friends. And then I see for physical, their doctor and their dentist or their parents, okay? physical health, their husband and parents, their social health, um, their family and friends. So this is just an um, a idea or a feel of what one of the activities look like um, in doing this with young people. So, you know, um, it goes kind of easy for us because we, you know, can, you know, easily think about these things and compartment, compartmentalize the individuals in our lives and how they influence us. But working with young people, we may have to work through this a little bit, right? And provide examples and things of that nature. Let me see what else we have. Gym teacher for physical health. So thinking of a young person, right? Their four best friends, their mom and sister for emotional health, spiritual health, their minister and sisters in church. Spiritual health, um, their mother and uh, for their social health, their boyfriend, okay? So thank you guys for participating in, in that, that particular activity. Another activity, just so that you all can continue to get a, a look and feel in the updates um, of the Let's Talk curriculum. So now we move into module 10, stress reduction. Again, you have the learning goals that are listed, which are to map out the stressors and potential crises um, related to being a youth. Um, understand the solid problem solving and stress management skills um, can, and how they can help manage stress in their lives. Learn informal options and resources that may help with coping with stress. There are three activities in this particular module. Um, you have the first activity, which is defining and identifying stress. The second activity, which is problem solving. And then the third activity, which is things to do to deal with stress. Let's see, some teams use chat friends on social media. But yep, absolutely. So here we're going to work through our problem solving skills. We're actually going to go through activity two um, of module 10. <clears throat> so um, in the problem solving, um, uh, activity, we're going to develop a decision tree. This decision tree and the purpose of this activity, we're going to help a young person walk through the process of um, problem solving, identifying pros and cons to a particular issue, thinking of various different solutions of that particular issue. So right here, you have the directions. As a facilitator, you will read these directions to the young people. Using the example stated below, which is in the middle, um, that the young person is fighting with the dad about the stepmom and her children. That's the example. So using that example, we wanna make a decision tree to help map out options and consequences for this particular problem. For each way the problem could be resolved, whether positive or negative, healthy or unhealthy, we wanna create a branch. 
So for each solution, you're going to create a, a branch, right? And then on each of these branches, we want to map out the pros, the cons, and the consequences of each possible solution and connecting the leaves to the larger branch. So that's how we're going to develop our um, decision tree. And we'll get to see an example of it afterwards. So again, the goal of the decision tree is to see that, see all of the possible options and consequences that we can lay out um, on a sheet of paper and um, help us make our best decision. So again, the example is we're fighting with our dad about our stepmom and her children. <laughs> Stepmom's issues are real issues for teens. Absolutely. They absolutely are. And this is the person who has lived experience with that as a young person. I agree. So let's think about this here, the issue, the problem. We're, we're fighting with our dad about our stepmom. Okay. We have, what are our possible solutions? What are some of the things that we can possibly come up with? Um, finding commonality with family and executing the plan, smile a lot, it's um, as it demonstrates, let me see here, let me go back, um, as it demonstrates acceptance, take a deep breath, okay? Communicate using I feel statements. So these are some of the solutions that you all come up with. How about, let's think about um, one possible solution to be staying with dad and talking with him. Talking, talking through the issue before running away or before removing our, ourselves from the home, like that would be the, could possibly be the absolute last option, right? So one of the solutions could be staying with dad and talking through. Then another possible solution could be um, to actually run away. So this is, remember, we're building a branch of our tree. Um, and then a, another possible solution could be to just kind of stay and deal with it, not address it at all. We just kind of stick around and just deal with it. So we have three possible solutions, right? Staying, talking, talking it out with dad, expressing ourselves, hearing him out. Hopefully dad hears us out. That's solution one. Then we move into possible solution two, which would be the second branch of our tree, um, big branch of our tree, which is, um, and then we move into the third possible solution is to stay and just kind of suck it up buttercup and deal with it, right? Um, let's deal with the solution number one. If solution one is to stay with dad and talk it out and work through it, what is a possible pro for that? solution and a con for that solution. So in the chat, I want you guys to tell me what could be a possible pro and a con for staying with and talking it out with dad. So I see here, let's see. Reassess who said mom is, focus on positive connections. We have um, take some quiet time, walk away from the situation. That could be a possible solution. So we have pro. It gets better. Um, con, the, there's a potential communication breakdown. So on our tree, we have the big branch, which is solution one. We talked about staying and talking it out. So we will add a little leaf to that branch. And that could be the pro, it gets better. Then we add another leaf, which would be the con, the communication breakdown. Then we move into, let's go down to solution three, where we said to just kind of stay and deal with it you know, the suck it up buttercup, right? What could be a possible pro and con? Well, I see some more pros and cons for the first solution, let's see. Um, pro, dad and I would improve our relationship um, and stepmom might listen to me. Um, let's see, a con, there are triggers, anger, trust issues, exactly. So all of those things, those pros and cons will be listed as leads. So now we move to the third possible solution that we identified, um, which is to just kind of stay and deal with it, not talk it out, not do anything. What could be a possible pro and con for staying in, and not addressing the issue at all? We're just there and we're just kind of dealing with it. Let's see a pro. They won't be homeless. We won't be homeless. A con. Um, our mental health and possible physical health could be in trouble. 
So those are two small leaves on the branch, okay? There's mental stress. That could be a con that we add another leaf there. Any others? Um, pro discernment on what the emergency, what is the emergency and non-emergency, that could be a possible pro. Um, a con, mental stress is holding down our emotions. So you all get it, right? So now let's take a look at what our decision trees could look, look like in the outcome of things, right? So remember the actual problem, we're fighting with dad about stepmom and their children. Ultimately, this is an example. We didn't want to show this beforehand because it has the pros and cons um, and answers and things like that. But this is the goal of the activity that we will work with, with work through with the young people. And you build out that, that tree. So you get to talk to the young people in the process of making a decision. A lot of our young people, um, when it comes to, um, when it comes to um, running away or being in a crisis, it's natural for them, it's a natural part of their development to just kind of do the first thing that comes to mind. This activity will help develop those problem solving skills and being able to process through the situation beforehand. Let's see, anything else in the chat that I wanna to touch on? There's a possible, somebody else mentioned a possible pro of developing positive bond through activity. I'm sorry, through therapy. So that is um, module 10 and um, activity, let me see, which one is that? Module 10 and um, activity two with the decision tree. So now more into how to access this curriculum after you all got a opportunity, uh, just kind of see how activities go and how it's set up. How do you get access? So again, from our um, website, 1-800-runaway.org, under the um, prevention and education tab, you'll see highlighted in green, the Let's Talk Cur Prevention Curriculum. Once you um, go to the website and you click on the Let's Talk Prevention Curriculum, you'll be um, able to access all of the different supports and resources as a, um, a agency that is utilizing the curriculum. So you'll be able to access facilitation tips, such as um, the general tip sheet and our um, virtual tip sheet. This is downloadable or um, where you can either print or download and save. Um, it provides different tips, um, such as being prepared to give definitions or explain concepts. Um, to make sure that you're grouping um, according to size and energy that determines the outcome of your activity. Um, it also, this tip sheet has also been converted to um, help you with being able to facilitate in a virtual setting. You know, thankful to COVID, we now do a lot of things over the screen such as we're doing today. So we have a tip sheet for um, things to do to be able to facilitate in a virtual setting such as modify appropriate activities to an online game format. So being able to make those adjustments to make it more intriguing and um, engaging for young people. So those are your facility, uh, facilitation tips. But then you can actually follow the steps to be able to access and, and download. So you would, um, you would actually um, click on the download curriculum, which will lead you to the um, being able to select if you want the English version or the Spanish version of the curriculum. Remember, the Spanish version will be updated to match what you see there for the English version. Once you identify the version that you wanted to download, then you would move into um, setting up your account. Once you've set up your account, then you'll be able to identify each course. Again, you can, the cu curriculum implementation is um, very flexible. You can do each module in order, you can pick a module for the topic that is important to your group for that particular day or that session, or you can do just one module all together. Um, it's very flexible in the implementation. Remember that if you run into any type of technical issues, NRS is here to support you through that um, process and to get you the support that's needed. Um, so um, there is, that is our, 
then we have information that we collect in our curriculum that helps us to um, provide further development of the curriculum and activities, um, identify the curriculum and act, um, the modules that were most popular and things of that nature. So this information is very important for us to collect. You have the demographic form. You wanna um, complete it after each module that you um, complete. You wanna provide the facilitators contact information, date that the class occurred, the number of young people that participated, the age of the um, young people that participated, um, the type of class. Um, and then the module that, or modules that you presented. So again, this information helps to inform our um, future use and um, development of the, the Let's Talk curriculum. And that is our um, Let's Talk curriculum. Any questions? Let me check the chat because I didn't see anything after the activity. Okay, thank you, thank you. And if you all have specific questions and you like, you can come off mute um, and we can answer the questions. And one thing I don't know that I mentioned or maybe I did, but I wanna reiterate that this is completely free um, and available to, to you all. Great, awesome resource. I love it. I will absolutely be implementing um, with my program. Christopher just provided trouble, troubleshooting and logging um, information uh, if you need to recover your password. Um, how do I register, register my organization with your hotline? Um, as it relates to the Let's Talk curriculum, you can go there. Um, as it relates to providing or being a resource on our website, um, Christopher or Sam can uh, jump in. Okay, there it is, our database. You want to go ahead and um, contact Brad um, Potts with bpotts at 1-800-runaway.org to be able to connect your organization to um, NRS and be added to our database. And there's also a way to do it online as well. Any other questions? Um, for Danita, Sam also included our resource at 1-800-runaway.org as well um, to be able to um, get connected to our database. Thank you. Graphic is really appealing to the youth. That is a goal. Again, um, having young people um, a part of our board our youth advisory board providing that insight and that input. That's good to hear that, um, that, that the graphics are appealing. That is our goal to make sure that it connects with young people. But if there are any other questions, again, I wanna thank you guys for your participation and your time. Um, and participating in our um, learning um, more about NRS uh, two-part series. Here are some suggested resources um, and free educational materials to support in utilizing our Let's Talk curriculum and utilizing and accessing resources um, or NRS services. You have our YouTube channel, um, which includes our NRS um, PSAs, outreach, and information videos. You have um, our free posters, brochures, and educational materials that we mentioned. Um, you have the Let's Talk Runaway Prevention Curriculum where you can download. Um, access to our National Runaway Prevention Month where we hope that all of your organizations will participate next November. And um, access to all of the data and trend reports and statistics that NRS gathers from our engagement with um, um, the young people that are contacting us on our lines and through our chats. And as stated in the chat, our presentation from today will be um, 
online. A copy of the video will be on the, our um, online and avail available at our 1-800-runaway.org getting to know website. While I am your presenter for today, Jeff Stern will be your main contact for more information regarding Let's Talk Prevention Resources. Um, he's the Chief Engagement Officer, so if you want to take a moment, take a picture, screenshot, or jot down his contact information. If you have questions on um, accessing or needing support for the run Runaway, um, Let's Talk Runaway curriculum, you can reach out to Jeff and he will gladly support you or direct you to the correct person. So again, thank you to everybody for your participation. Um, I am going to see if there's any um, final comments or anything from Susan or Jeff. All right. Oh, okay. I do not have anything else. Just want to thank everybody for joining us. And thank you, Shanae, for a great presentation. So thank you. All right. Thank you guys for your time. Have a great day. Thank you.